In this video, we are going to review a bad debt and accounts receivable journal entry exercise. So we have a few different things we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about recording the actual bad debt expense, collections, the sale, a write-off, all of those different transactions that are related. So first of all, we have balances for certain accounts at the beginning or at the end of July 31st, 2017. Now it tells us we have three different accounts receivables. They have debit balances as one would expect. That shows us since the accounts receivable is an asset that that amount is positive, so to speak. Now notice we have the allowance for doubtful accounts. This is known as a contra asset account. It offsets the asset balance and it shows the net realizable value on the balance sheet. Since it is a contra asset account, its normal balance is credit. So if the allowance for doubtful accounts has a credit balance, that means it's positive. In this particular situation, it's important to note that this one is a debit balance, which basically tells us that it's a negative balance. We used more allowance than we had. In other words, we wrote off more bad debts than we expected. That's the way to look at this. Whenever you see a problem like this, pay close attention to whether the allowance account is a debit or credit. So we'll talk about how to handle that in just a bit. Then during the last month they had a variety of transactions. They had some service revenue, some collections, three accounts written off as uncollectible, and then the bad debt expense it tells us it's recorded on the basis of the aging of accounts receivables using the following aging schedule. By the way, in this case, uh, you'll notice that they only gave us three of the accounts receivables. There may very well be others, but we're only dealing with these three for this particular problem. So if you notice, don't try to add the total accounts receivable balances up. They may not equal what we have for just these three customers because there may be others. We're only focusing on three. So again they give us the schedule for that and we'll have to deal that with that in a little bit. The first thing we're going to do though is we're going to journalize the service revenue earned throughout the period. So they tell us that the service revenue was on account was $475,000 and apparently it all relates to Missy Clark. So it is going to be debited to the accounts receivable for Missy Clark. Because apparently she has uh, had some sort of service performed and she wasn't able to pay for it right now. Now the credit to that is going to go to service revenue. We've earned money. This part in and of itself isn't really bad debt related. It just sets the stage. Now the second transaction is journalize the collections on accounts throughout the period. Now this uh, the only collection we have for this particular example is for Missy Clark again and it's 451,800. So now what we're doing we have to debit cash because we are indeed receiving cash and now we're crediting A.R. Missy Clark. We're crediting her accounts receivables because she no longer owes that amount of money. Now remember also she had a beginning balance of 105000 so these were not the only transactions she had she already had $105,000 to begin with. What they're telling us now is that we are also writing off $1,800 as uncollectible for Missy Clark. So what will happen here, this is the first of our real true bad debt expense related transactions. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at this. By the way, if we jump down here, You'll notice we also have T accounts set up for each of these accounts. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and record some of these 
So for Missy Clark, she has a hundred five thousand uh, dollar starting balance. We just debited it again for four hundred seventy five thousand, and we credited the account for four hundred fifty one thousand eight hundred. So right now, just to kind of calculate a balance. Her balance would actually be, and let me do this instead, it would be $128,200 on the debit side. That is what her balance would be. We are, for some reason, only writing off $1,800, so we're going to have to take $1,800 out of that. I'm going to go ahead and, it's going to be a credit to that account. But the, and so it's $1,800. The journal entry, however, we know we're going to have to credit the accounts receivable for Missy Clark to take it out. Now, under GAAP, under the generally accepted accounting principles, we're required to use the allowance method. And in this case, we're using the aging of accounts receivable version of that method. So what that tells us is we do not debit bad debt expense during the write-off, instead we estimate bad debt expense every at the end of every period. But again, what we're doing now to actually record the write-off, we have to use up the allowance for doubtful accounts. When we first record the bad debt expense, we credit the allowance for doubtful accounts to increase it, and when we use up the when we write something off, and we use up that allowance for doubtful accounts with a debit. So we're debiting the allowance for doubtful accounts to pull money out of that for $1,800. Now we're going to do the same thing for the Severco write-off. So by the way, we keep debiting the, allow or, uh, yeah, the allowance for doubtful accounts and we credit the corresponding accounts receivables. We can do the same for Oliver Green. Debit it to allowance for doubtful accounts, credit to that accounts receivable. So let's pull down the, the amounts here. 500 for Severco and 900 for Oliver Green. So now, the last journal entry is to record the bad debt expense adjusting entry. Now this is actually the more complicated out of this group, and before we can do anything with this, we certainly have to know what our allowance for doubtful account balance is. But let's go ahead and take all of the accounts, and let's update the T accounts for everything. So I think we did Missy Clark already. Severco, we're going to do $25,000 debit. And the only thing we had there was a $500 write-off. Oliver Green had a $15,000 debit. And we credited that for $900. Just want to make sure I'm not missing any accounts here. The allowance for doubtful accounts. This is important. We had $2,200 debit. And let's take a look and make sure what all impacted that. Service revenue, by the way, we didn't have a starting balance. We can just put in 475000 credit. Cash, we didn't have a starting balance. We'll put in the $451,800 debit. So we already have these first two journal entries completed. Now, $1,800 write off for, for Missy Clark. We need to debit the allowance for doubtful accounts for $1,800. We already did it for the AR. We need to debit allowance again for $500 for Severco. 
Again, we already did the accounts receivable. And we need to debit it again for 900 for Oliver Green. So I believe we have everything that we need to record so far. So now what we're going to do here, in order to calculate, in order to compute the bad debt expense under the aging method, you have to know where your allowance for doubtful account certain currently is, what the balance is. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We don't have any credits yet. So our balance is actually 5400 on the debit side. What that means is it's $5,400 negative. Right off the bat, we're not even starting from zero. We're starting in the hole. Now, the aging method, we have four different categories of bad debts. And each one has its own amount and its own risk percentage, so to speak. What you have to do is multiply each of the columns, the balances multiplied by the risk percentage, and then add up all of those, the, the product of all of those calculations. So what this is, what this gives us when we multiply that is the desired ending balance of our allowance for doubtful accounts. So that's what we want our allowance to be. Now, we want it to be 11,401, and we want it to be positive 11,401. We're currently negative 5,400. So for this particular situation, what we have to do is add those two amounts together to get a, a desired credit entry for 16,801. So if we do that, if we put 16801, our balance would now end up being 11,401 like we want it to be. If we take the credits minus the debits, we're going to end up with 11,401. So remember the balance to do that, you had to credit the allowance for doubtful accounts by 16,801. Now, the debit to this journal entry is finally bad debt expense. So that when we talk about the bad debt expense adjusting entry, under any allowance method, no matter which way you calculate it, it's going to be a debit to bad debt expense, a credit to the allowance for doubtful accounts. The only question is, how are you calculating it? Here we are using the, the aging method that aging method gives us a desired ending balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts. And then we have to compare that to where we currently were to figure out what do we need to credit that account for to get to our desired balance. And that credit goes into the journal entry. And that is the last step of our, I guess we could put the 16,801 right here since we just did that. That is the last step of this problem. So hopefully this has helped to clarify bad debts and accounts receivables, write-offs, collections, all of that. Thank you for your time.